Why should we pay special attention to end-of-life care for veterans? Well, here are just a few compelling reasons. There are about 22 million U.S. veterans. One out of every four individuals dying today in the United States is a veteran. Half of men dying today are veterans. More than 1,800 vets die every day. And predictions are that more than 95% will die in your care in communities across the country. Finally, as I'm sure you'll agree, understanding, knowing how to care for veterans is simply the right thing to do. I was a nurse practitioner at a VA. My sister is a social worker and runs a program, director of a program at the VA. Neither of us caught the cues. It's like you, can, you can't see the forest or the trees kind of thing. I wish and I hope that everybody can be aware. We talk a lot about veterans coming home from the war, but there should be a lot of emphasis on veterans at the end of life. So what I teach the families to do when this patient is there and agitated is to sit with their loved one, place their hand firmly on their chest, and actually you can, and then you can actually, even if the patient's unconscious or semi-conscious, be kind of, yeah. There you <laughs> loosen up, Brian. Yeah, loosen up, Brian. <laughs> and then I'll actually have them take the patient's hand and place it on their chest and just sit quietly and deeply and breathe deeply. It is amazing how that can settle an, a, a semi or agitated patient down just by doing that. It's not my desire for anybody to go to their grave carrying these painful memories, especially of war, and if I can discern that they're there, I need to pass that on or try to, if they want to vent to me, fine. If they don't, then I need to refer that on. And it could be I've not seen one yet, but it could be that they don't want to vent it to anybody, a professional or me. And then that's, that's going to be a, not a failure on my part, but it's just going to be a tragedy for me that they, that would happen. What I've tended to see with Korean veteran, Korean War veterans is um, more disgruntlement with that experience. And, uh, and that, you, that comes out in, in your end-of-life conversations and what they're experiencing? All the time. How? All the time. What do well, they say? Let's say you think, uh, thanking them for their service. Um, when I say that to a Vietnam veteran, often I get tears, and no one's ever said that to me before. You know, sometimes they'll tell you no one's ever said that to me before? Sure. Sure. At, their end of, at the end of their lives? That's oh, what yes. you're hearing? Mm -hmm. But with Korean War veterans, sometimes I get a shrug, mm. you know, because they, they they weren't ever part of a culture that accepted it. And what, so do you, they, what do you do after the shrug? What does that shrug mean? Why did you do that? And give them a chance to tell you. I can't lie flat. I have to be s seated. Um, I, it takes me a long time to get uh, to bed, and I and when I get in bed, I feel trapped. And if I were in a hospice or a hospital, I think that PTSD would be very much a, a factor in my end of life. There was a, a researcher, Dr. Jeffrey Gold, and he looked at PTSD or partial PTSD. So you had many of these symptoms, but you might not meet the full criteria. I want to take a guess, out of 300 oncology patients presenting for routine cancer care, what percentage of them met PTSD or partial PTSD? 45%. 45%. So, so I, I just say that, that you know, I, I hope that our, our audience doesn't say, oh, you know, veterans are the only people that experience PTSD. If you've got a serious illness and cancer going through chemotherapy, loss of function, loss of role, it, it has PTSD-like qualities that can really impact your life. My father-in-law was 89 years old. It was his time. He knew it was his time. His family knew it was his time. For a much younger person who may be facing end of life, it's not their time. Um, given that and the very different experience in more rec the recent conflicts of Iraq and Afghanistan, what special challenges would you say there are in dealing with veterans of very recent conflicts? 
there are cultural differences between being a civilian and being in the military, but we're all individual people, and so much of it has to do with the branch of the service you were in, the rank you had, and the job you did. Um, I was a medic, and there was a big difference while I was in the service of the medical people versus people in other jobs. Um, and so I think both things have to be taken into consideration. Yes, it's important to understand military culture and the expectations that we place on ourselves, but at the same time we're individual people and to uncover that part of who we are is just as important as understanding the culture.